Hey, welcome back to uh, Poorly Explained. Here is Ultraman Gaia, part of uh, Guard. Good luck with this one. It's an acronym? Yes. And what an acronym it is. Is it G A R D? G U A R D. Fuck! <laughs> if G stands for Guardian or Guard, I'm gonna lose my fucking mind. It does not. Thank God. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck else it would be. <laughs> you, you ready? Sure. Geocentric Universal Alliance Against the Radical Destruction. <laughs> <laughs> That's a backronym, man. That's shit. And within that, there is a uh, Zig. Oh, XIG. Words. <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah, so it's the expanded interceptive. Shut up! <laughs> expanded interceptive guardians. <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, they capitalize the X and they don't capitalize the E. Yeah, they still cheated. <laughs> No, it's it's real good. So a space crystal appears and makes fools of the lightning team. The what? Lightning team. Who are they? They're a part of Zig. Since when? Since the beginning. Okay, so Zig is this huge fucking operation. There's uh -huh. like six or seven different teams. Okay. Because you got like the lightning team, you got uh, Team Crow, Team Falcon. Why is it? Lightning team, and then the team <laughs> comes first after that. I don't know. Then there's Team Marlin, Team Seagull, Great. Hercules unit, Hercules team. <laughs> maybe not, maybe no. it's Team Hercules. I don't fucking know. These fucking people aren't consistent in anything. <laughs> but yeah, no, they got a whole, whole big operation going on. Uh. <clears throat> anyway, uh, Guy is not happy that they aren't flying his jets correctly. So Guy is like this dude in uh, in college who has like a degree in uh, some sort of quantum physics. Okay. And he's the guy who basically got the uh, made the repulsion system for. The jets and the aerial base, and like he he calls why up he why calls. Does this sound familiar? Because I probably told you about it. Oh, okay. Because I probably sent you a picture like, oh, he got a PhD when he was like nine. <laughs> okay. And like he he calls up Zig and he's just like, yo, your pilots are fucking shit. Look, look, you can do way more with these planes. Like you don't have to pretend they're planes. Hmm. And uh. So then he falls down a hole and he asks Ultraman to, for his power. It's really weird because like he's got this, uh, he's got this machine at the start. It's like, you know those virtual roller coasters where it's got like a, like a TV screen on it and it's just basically a pod. Sure. And it like shakes around to pretend like you're on a on a roller coaster. Uh huh. It's kind of like that. And uh, he, he he rides that, and he sees Ultraman, and then then his friends pull him out, and then he falls down the hole later, and he's like, "Ultraman, please, I need to defeat the monster." Wait, where where did the monster come in? I thought he just fell down a hole. Well, the monster came from the space crystal. Okay. <laughs> you know, I probably. Yeah, no, I just... I feel was, like we, we, I, I we might took, have... like, a whole trek. <laughs> after, like, the Space Crystal came out, like, and it, it did a thing, and then we had the team thing, and then... And then we had to talk about... Guy's host fucking bitching about using planes wrong, and... And, yeah, and then it's just like he fell down a hole, and I'm like... 
Yeah, it just sort of happens, and then... I don't even know if it was real, because the hole's no longer there, and he comes back to it later, and... I don't know. It's 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 fine. It's whatever. Okay. Don't worry about it. Okay. Guy defeats the monster and joins Zig, where he shows off how much better of a pilot he is. So the next monster, like, immediately appears, and Guy sneaks off with the bison to transform. The what? So, uh, Team Hercules has a vehicle called the Bison. Okay. And it's just basically an oversized tank. Okay. And, like, he... So one of the fun things about this show is they have a fuck ton of vehicles, and they transform like Bakugans do. Why specifically Bakugan? Because you know how Bakugans show up as a ball and then they, like, fold out? Yes. Yeah, that's how all their vehicles basically start. As a ball? Well, it's more like a hexagon, whatever hexa. Okay. And then it, like, folds out, and, uh... That's what the bison does, too. It's great. Wait, are they, like, handheld things? And no, they... no, no. The, they're, they're vehicles. They... No, but, like, I'm saying the, <clears throat> the, the things that they come out of. No. No, they're like storage containers. Why the fuck did they transfer? That, that's so <laughs> pointless. The tank would do a better job of transporting itself. Well, they gotta drop it out of the plane. Well, they... Well, alright. You know what? <laughs> Maybe, but still. There's no reason for it to fold up and to... Whatever. No, it, 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 it's... Anyway. So we're gonna get to... So five years ago, there was this group of super smart children who called themselves the Alchemy Stars. Uh-huh. And, and they're the ones who led to the formation of Guard with their supercomputer. Okay. The the supercomputer's like, yo, shit's gonna go down in like five years. Get, 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 get ready. Okay, but isn't this universe connected to... To Tiga and, and Gaia? Or yes. Tiga and Dinah? No! <laughs> this is a completely new universe. Oh, right. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Gaia fights a metal monster who proves to be too much until a second Ultraman appears. Okay. Yeah, the second Ultraman just shows up and is like, you suck! Boom! Kills the monster and runs off. <laughs> okay. An interdimensional jellyfish turns the city into its natural habitat, a desert. Guy gets his college friends to make a device to pull it into, the, into, the, into their dimension. Guy, guy steals a jet because he really wants to fly. But he already... He steals, like, the commander's jet, and it basically turns into his his jet. Okay. Like, he, 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 he builds, like, an autopilot system for it, too, so he can... So he can transform under the guise of him still being in the jet. Okay. Without exploding it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, no, like... So I think his college friends might also be part of the Alchemy Stars... The, the group of smart children. Who, okay. Who aren't very smart and they're not very children. Okay. Guy gets sent home to inform his family of his new government job. Some seawater follows him and attacks the town. Second Ultraman reappears to fight it, but needs Guy's help. Second Ultraman was also a former alchemy star who believes the Earth needs to be saved, but not so much the people. Okay. We'll get some backstory on that, too. Cool. But not for, like, 30 episodes. Okay. Gaia is afraid of a giant eyeball because it is irrational. He gets trapped in the eyeball of Hell Dimension, which proves to be a mistake because the eyeball dies when, I, when Gaia leaves. <laughs> okay. Was the process of leaving what killed it? It, it was explosive, yes. Alright. Still weird. A typhoon cleaning the atmosphere has to be destroyed, so Zig dive bombs the eye of the storm, revealing the typhoon machine. <laughs> it crashes and becomes the tornado machine until Guy goes <laughs> through it. A worm that's gone extinct five times, apparently, wants to rectify this by coexisting with a crab. (laughs) (laughs) 
random choice, but sure. <laughs> yeah, it's great, because there's uh, another Alchemy Stars lady who shows up, and she's like, yeah, I know, this thing has gone extinct so many times, but it just really wants to live, and we can't tell it to not live. <laughs> How does it keep coming back? I don't know. It just does. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> a super hot meteor lands and tries to turn the Kanto region into a crater by increasing its mass. Meanwhile, Team Seagull has to rescue civilians in a building. The meteor is injected with negative mass, and it doesn't really like that. What is negative mass, you ask? I don't fucking know. <laughs> Impossible? Yes. Whatever. A monster factory from space is shot down by Team Crow in their theme song. <clears throat> it's really weird. Like, So they introduced Team Crow and Team Falcon in the same episode. Mm -hmm. And they're like, yeah, Team Crow's the second best. Only, only beaten by Team Falcon. And I'm sitting there looking, I'm like, then why the fuck are we using Lightning Team? <laughs> why are we using these losers? Uh, no. <clears throat> no. Also, Team Crow is special because they get their own theme song. Cool. Nobody else gets a theme song. Just them. A dragon shuts off the utilities because it's not feeling the feng shui of Tokyo. Hang, hang on. Sorry. They gave the second best team a theme song? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. Anyway... Continue. <laughs> a dragon shuts off the utilities because it's not feeling the feng shui of Tokyo. Team Hercules goes to flush it out, and it, and it leaves because of vague promises to be better people. So feng shui is going to come up a few times, actually. Okay. <clears throat> there, there's this feng shui expert, and she shows up every once in a while to be like, Ah, yes. The ley lines. And the monsters. They're all connected. A gas wolf appears, and, and Lightning Team goes on foot to get rid of it. The wolf absorbs some gas, and second Ultraman goes for the kill. Gaia stops him and returns to Wolf's space. How? It's made of gas. He puts it in a, in a, in a gas tank. <laughs> okay. The desert jellyfish uses tele telemarketing to mind control a town. Second Ultraman casually kills it. There's also a group of reporters that are running around, and they're, they're kind of like a, a big deal. Okay. And uh, this whole episode is basically <clears throat> the uh, one, one of the reporters gets stuck in town and is being chased down by, by everybody. And he's got to protect a kid. And, uh... When second Ultraman casually kills the monster, like, it's right next to all the people. Uh -huh. So Gaia has to, like, dive down to shield them. From what? The spray? Yes. Gross. <laughs> Is it at least white so we can get Gaia christened? No, it was, it was, it was chunks. Damn. Gaia does get splooted on. Good. I don't remember when it happens, but it happens. <laughs> Antimatter is, is on its way to Earth, and the Alchemy Stars have 48 hours to create an anti-antimatter device. <laughs> the device fails. Second Ultraman turns Gaia into antimatter anti to fight it. That's, that's, that's so dumb. That's so fucking dumb. Well, you know, if it, uh, if it connected with matter, it would explode. And yeah! So just throw matter at it. It was really big. <laughs> like, it was really fucking big. <sighs> like an asteroid. Like, fuck, man. <laughs> There's a lot of those. They only had 48 hours. Alright, fair. So creating a machine completely from scratch. What the best yeah, thing? no, that's pretty fucking stupid. <laughs> a monster made of improperly disposed cloned organs turns people into blobs. The curious final guy blows it up. What? <laughs> the, uh, the, the, the improperly displayed, just, 
Improperly disposed organs, they, like, coalesce into, like, a thing. This episode was really dumb. I hated it. <laughs> Something to do with rain. I don't know. Okay. All right, are you ready for a second Ultraman's backstory? Sure. So his name is Agle, and he was the lead scientist on the uh, supercomputer that predicted the destruction of Earth. Who the fuck names their kid Agle? Well, that's just where Ultraman goes by. <laughs> oh, it's Ultraman Agle, is what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Fair. All right, fine. And uh, he, he absorbed light by jumping into a pool, which allowed him to inherit Earth's will. <laughs> It was a really deep pool. In a cave or something like that. In a facility. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> Alright, I guess. I don't know. It, it was really dumb. So, like, he builds the computer and is like... Uh, like they're, they're working on ways to prevent humans <clears throat> or Earth from... Like, destroying itself. And he's like, well, I removed one thing. And everybody looks at him like, what, what'd you remove? And he's like, humans. And the supercomputer's like, yeah, that's, that checks out, boss. <laughs> <clears throat> Which is why, you know, saving the Earth, big priority. People, whatever. If they die, they die. I will revive a monster, destroy a monster to destroy a space monster orb. Gaia doesn't like this, because uh, this plan will cause mass destruction within a 20-kilometer radius. See, this monster's got, like, a fucking generator on its back. Uh-huh. And he's Agle's going to open its back up to fire a laser at the, uh, the space orb. And then the orb's going to fucking explode and kill everybody. Okay. The Ultramans fight due to a clash of interests, and Agle attempts to drop the aerial base. Why? And, and before, you, before you ask, no, they do not fight at Ultraman size. They fight at human size. As Ultramans, but human size. That's fine. It's not fine. <laughs> Why would you be in the Ultraman costume if you're going to fight at human size? Although Agle does punch him at Ultraman size. It's really funny. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, the, the jellyfish returns for its third scheme. Attaching a face to its crotch and, and emitting hallucinogenics... That, the, that caused the comms lady to remember that she had no friends growing up. <laughs> Gaia casually kills a jellyfish. <laughs> I thought it was in a different dimension. No, that, no. since the, since the first uh, one, they got that machine to pull it into their dimension. Oh. So they can just, you know, casually kill it. And it doesn't matter. Cool. Agro revives a prehistoric parasite to do a few murders and eventually fight the big bad. Gaia doesn't like this plan. Why does he keep reviving things? <laughs> Why is that his go-to? Look, when you can do it, you might as well do it, right? I love how it's like, Agro revived, insert monster here. Gaia didn't like that. <laughs> no, it's, 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 real, it's real good. Anyway, a sea monster created by toxic waste gives everyone blue balls that absorb oxygen. So why are there blue? Why are the blue balls back? <laughs> because these aren't the vampiric ones. These, these are the ones that just suck up oxygen. And Team Marlin, it's 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 their time to shine. Also, they fucking fail. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Team Marlin gets one episode and it's them failing. <laughs> awesome. I mean, Lightning basically did the same thing. Well, not, Lightning is in, like, every episode. Oh. Lightning is the basic team that they always use. Occasionally, Team Crow or Team Team Falcon or Team Hercules are the, uh, the, the go-getters, but it's it's mostly Lightning. Cool. Let's see. Uh, a child has to come to terms with there being a big bat out there. Gaia fights a horny Lightning monster. So the, the, the kid gets a, a telescope, and he's, like, looking out at the stars, and I think he sees the big bat, or he... I don't know, it's really dumb, he gets really scared about it. Uh-huh. And so he buries his telescope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. A uh, guy gets fired for hanging out with Agle too much. Meanwhile, a science lady tries to c uh, control monsters to force people to change for Agle's sake. 
It does not go well. She gets shot. By one of the monsters, I think. It's just like... I, I think it's another one of those uh, ones with the generator on its back. Uh-huh. I think she revives one of those and it kills her. <clears throat> anyway, Agra goes globetrotting uh, to, to reawaken several monsters because there's no time left and the sky has gotten all swirly. <laughs> what, well, like in Legends Arceus? <laughs> kind of. Damn. <clears throat> Agro gets beaten up at a bar because he's hanging out with the reporter from the. So the, the you know, I brought up the reporter group. And yeah. The, the the lady, the actual reporter is a lady, and okay, she falls in love with him basically. Great. So she's helping him like not die, not bleed out right now. Because he what he he wasted a lot of energy picking up all those monsters around the world. Okay. And so like, also the media knows that. He's connected to uh, the the blue Alt man. He's connected to Aggle. They don't know why he is Aggle yet. Oh, but they know he's connected to him. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, so he's basically on the run, and like he goes to a bar, and they they're, they're playing a news thing. Like, yeah, he might have kidnapped this the reporter, and they look over and like, oh, there's the reporter. <laughs> Let's all beat him up. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, Guy and Agle get over get uh, get in a fight over who the real Ultraman is, unconsciously feeding the thing, making the sky swirly. What is he, Majin Buu? I don't know. He's pulling energy out of him. Okay. Now, I think uh, I think this episode ends with the captain finding out that Gaia is Gaia. How he got fired. Well, he showed up to the Gaia Agle fight, and he found he found Gaia lying on the ground. Why did he? Well, wait. Were they fighting as Ultraman? Yeah. Okay, I guess that's fair that the the captain would show up. Then I guess. I know I haven't brought the captain up at all. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. Is he pretty unimportant? But he he's kind of like he's kind of like Gaia's father figure. Cool. I yeah. guess. And so, like, he, he learns that he's guy, and he's like, well, I guess I'll keep my mouth shut. Good thing I know to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> well, but, I, mm, mm. Anyway, you know that supercomputer that uh, the Alchemy Stars made? Oh, please tell me it's evil. Yeah, so it's been manipulated by the Herald, or, it's been manipulated to herald the arrival of the Big Bad. Okay. That will give this guy the power to sell more toys and defeat the Big Bad. What? <laughs> So Aggle's like, here, here, take my Aggle power, giving Gaia a new form. Great. Which is only slightly different than his base form. <laughs> but it's different enough. Yeah, so I guess it is, uh, his base form has like a gold collar. Uh-huh. And with the Aggle power up, it's now black. Okay. Right. And then there's a second upgrade to where he gets, he's now red and blue. And he's like twice as big. Like he's not, not not like height. Like he's buff now. He's like twice as buff. Okay. That form never takes a fucking hit. <laughs> what do you mean? Every time he goes in that form, he just immediately wins. Like I secretly hope that's because do they? Is it the same scene every time no. when you transform? Damn no. It. Because um, uh, Leopardon. Uh, from the Spider-Man, sh- the Japanese Spider-Man show, they lost the suit. <laughs> yeah, no, this is just simply, it's a massive power boost. Okay, but like, the funniest part about Leopardon is because they lost the suit, they had they only had the stock footage from like the first couple of episodes, so he has to beat everything in one hit, because that's all <laughs> they've got the stock footage for for Leopardon. So like... In, in, like, robot fandom, Leopardon is the strongest robot in, in existence because it wins every fight in one punch. <laughs> but yeah, no, alright. That's that's fun, I guess. So th- th- this is where I got kind of confused because uh, the supercomputer comes back and it hacks the guard network and steals all the remains of the previous metal monsters. It then staples Guy to the ground. So, like, I'm still thinking, like, okay, so is the super... Was the supercomputer manipulating 
the, the giant monster in the last episode, or was the giant monster manipulating the supercomputer? Well, I thought the big bad was manipulating the supercomputer. That's what I thought, and then it just made it, they made it sound like the supercomputer was working against the humans from the get-go as its own entity, because it does become its own entity. <sighs> okay. <clears throat> but, I mean... I don't know, it's not really well explained. Mm. It might have been. It might be. I'm just an idiot. <laughs> I mean, that, that's a that's a huge possibility. Okay. Either way, the supercomputer gets destroyed. Cool. Until like a few episodes later. <laughs> oh, fucking god. Was and, it like put part of itself in the internet or something? I think that's what happens. I mean, it's reasonable. An oversized space heater transforms into a beetle to fight Gaia. Guy's dad saves a man from being broiled, and he's not exactly thrilled about it. <laughs> Why? Because his son died, and he's like, oh, well, I guess I don't get to meet my son again. Oh, uh, whatever. Dang, I guess I gotta keep living. Damn, what a, what a cross to bear. City in the Sky sends a monster to collect a delivery man. I'm suddenly thinking about the fucking, uh, the level from Twilight Princess. That's what it is. <laughs> is it full of evil chicken monsters? I mean, there is a monster on top of it. Well, I mean... They have no stairs. Mm. I don't remember. It, it, it's basically an episode of a guy, like, rambling on about this fictional city that he came from. And he's like, yeah, I know, uh... Nobody works at night. Like, as soon as, as, soon as the sun sets, bells ring, and everybody just goes home. And he's like, we don't got stairs in the in the city in the sky. We got uh, we got ropes, <laughs> or some shit. Uh, yeah, and it's it's a throwaway episode, really. Mm -hmm. A space roach turns a building into a tie for its eggs. Team Lightning leader has to make a difficult decision on whether to firebomb it with a civilian inside. Mm. And the civilian turns out to be like the comms lady's sister. Oh. Yeah. There's, okay. there, there's a whole romance between Lightning Leader and that lady. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so you know the giant eye monster? It's back. Except this time it's powered by a wizard from the Warring States. <laughs> Who wants to use his descendant's power as his own? What? <laughs> what? 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 Are you you're talking from like the Sengoku period? Yes. A wizard. A wizard. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I don't care at this point. <laughs> Gaia, Team Falcon, and the Monster time hop through various f futures where different parties win or lose. How many different parties are there? Oh, just the. Two of them? That's what I figured. So why were there... Like, how many futures could there be? Like, three? The, how, what's the third one? Oh, uh, the, the one that's the current future where nobody's won or lost. <laughs> it was a dumb episode. I hated this one. Okay. Because they're like, yeah, we're going to go sacrifice ourselves because we saw the future where we sacrifice ourselves and we win. Except we lose. And the monster is dead, and then they go back in time, and they're like, but we killed the monster in the future, so the monster in the past is now dead. And... <laughs> that doesn't make any fucking sense. No, this episode sucked. Okay. Gaia goes to Canada to check on, on a research project, but ends up fighting the legendary Canadian monster instead. What? What legendary Canadian monster? <laughs> I don't know, it's just a monster. Sasquatch? Should be Sasquatch. It, it was kind of like Sasquatch. It was kind of hairy, but they were uh, they made it, they were building a machine to uh, do some reforestation. And, okay. And apparently it was going to go bad, so that's why let's just call him Sasquatch. I guess he was uh, trying to destroy it, and uh, so guy kind of gets a love interest in the uh, the Sasquatch. <laughs> No, no. Damn it! No, the, 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 the research lady, she's also part of of the Alchemy Stars. They just keep adding new members to the Alchemy Stars. Cool, cool, glad. Glad that just, just staple on more people for no reason. 
And yeah, no, she's she gives him a grenade launcher. She's like, she she's driving a truck, and she's like, just fire at him. We're gonna lead him to this canyon where I've stashed a whole bunch of grenades. I'm gonna blow his ass up. Oh, I thought it was gonna be like, I made this grenade launcher for you. It has hearts on it. <laughs> anyway, pro wrestlers and Gaia team up to fight a pack of firewolves. What? Are they on fire? They're kind of like the gas wolf, except they're red. Okay. <laughs> and they might breathe fire. What do you mean, might? I don't remember. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm sure they got a projectile attack of some sort that's probably based on fire, but... Okay. Nah, one of the pro wrestlers, he, he goes to the mountains, because you hear about Leo's training. Remember <sighs> when Leo got sent to the mountains? To learn how to wall jump? Yes. Yeah, so, like, his coach is like, go to the mountains. Learn to wrestle. And he goes to the mountains and he gets possessed by one of the wolves. Like, they they have these little fucking, uh, like, tracker chip things. I don't know, fuck. They chip you. Uh-huh. And that raises your, your anger levels and your power levels. And then turns you into a wolf. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. The wolves have this? Yes. Okay, I thought this was gonna be like, like some nebulous organization <clears throat> made, made them. No, but but it just happens to turn you into a wolf. <laughs> All right, I mean that's fucking stupid, but sure. After coming across a monster egg, local ironworks pretends to be aliens and demand a ransom from guard. The guard of the egg? No, guard the organization. Oh. Why? Because they can get money for it. And they're Why broke. not just sell it? <clears throat> they're kind of idiots. Clearly. You see, that they call out guard and like one dude's holding his nose. And that's how he makes his alien noises. Oh my god. And they name the, their aliens, their alien personas after their ironworks facility. They That's just, pretty stupid. They just, like, add Ian to the end of it. Great. Okay, so I didn't mention this, but back when Haggle gives uh, Gaia his uh, new new form, he kind of gets exploded. <laughs> so anyway, Haggle returns looking pretty unexploded. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you exploded. I got better. It was horribly exa- over-exaggerated. My explosion was horribly... What, oh, God, what is it? It's like, rumors of my death would be greatly exaggerated. My, yeah. my, uh... My explosion was greatly exaggerated. <laughs> and he uh, hijacks an anti-air laser to reopen the wormhole that the big bad used. He helps Guy uh, defeat the monster shadow clones. Okay. You see, he was like, well, I'm going to go through that wormhole. I'm going to go kick an ass or something like that. <laughs> also, he has lost his aggle powers, so he's just doing this as a human. Okay. Anyway. The queen jellyfish is back with her telemarketing scheme. Since when was it a queen? The Why wh- does it keep upgrading? <laughs> because it's a recurring villain. Oh, my God. Anyway, well, th- this is the final one, I think. And she tries to trick Aggle into shooting the reporter. What? How? What? She, what? So, remember the science lady who was going around, who who tried to reawaken some alien or some monsters? Yeah, that she got shot. Yeah, so the, the queen jellyfish pretends to be the scientist lady. Who got shot. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> and and that, but but how does that convince Aggle? Because a, 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 that was Aggle's teacher, professor or whatever. They were very close. Okay, but... And, and she's just like, shoot your girlfriend, it'll be funny. <laughs> <laughs> You'll save Earth or something. Fla- <laughs> flawless logic there. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and, and believe it or not, this is the second time somebody's pretending to be this professor. Uh-huh. Uh, the supercomputer pretends to be the professor, too. Like a while ago. Oh, my God. Yeah, anyway, the plan doesn't really work. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure they just casually killed the queen, too. Finally. 
a man from guard really wants to drop the war crime bomb <laughs> on a sleeping monster, and everybody's really against that. <laughs> See, this is another one of the Feng Shui monsters. Okay. And, uh, so this guy, the guy who wants to drop the war crime bomb, he was in one of the fights when Agle was reviving the monsters, and his whole, like, squad got wiped out. Okay. So he's, he, he's got the biggest revenge boner for monsters. And everybody's like... Look, no, you can't drop that bomb. That's a war crime. And he's like, I don't give a shit. I'm doing it anyway. Why did they even make it? <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah. Is it so that there's a conflict in the story? <laughs> Probably. But yeah, I know. So he's, he's, he's really, really into that. And he drops it. And it basically kills the monster. Like, it gets to wander around a little bit. And then it just bleeds out. Oh, so they do use the bomb? Yeah. Huh. And everybody's just like, Ultraman, please, or Gaia, please, do do not hurt that monster. He's already in enough pain. Mm. And then the monster just kind of keels over. And we all just kind of, we all just kind of pan over to War Crime Bomb Man, and we're like, hey, <laughs> that was a little fucked up. You feel good about yourself? <laughs> and he's like, yes. <laughs> now let's make more bombs. <laughs> a scientist is turned into a monster because he's opposed to bacterial warfare. This is back in, like, the World War Two era. And, and the, so the government's just like, look, you're going to be our first test subject. Oh. And that, that, anyway, he spends the rest of his days in the swamp. Uh, fallout from the war crime bomb turned him into a giant monster that guy has to mercy kill. Well, that's awkward. <laughs> and war, and fucking, uh, fucking bomb man's just like, oh, it makes more monsters that I can beat with my boner? <laughs> God, yes. After a group of children visit the aerial base, one accidentally hijacks the fighter jet. The chief has to teach him how to fly it, and he gets to meet Gaia after he ejects. That sounds like a metaphor for death, but, I mean... <laughs> sure. Yeah, I know, like... What, what does, does... Does Gaia just Well, Gaia up? catches him. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but... So, so Why did Gaia need to catch him? So, so, so there's a giant monster. Uh huh. And uh, crap! What happens? Uh, I think it knocks like the uh, the glass part of the cockpit off. Okay. And his drawings of Gaia go flying into the wind, and because he is a small child, he's like, "I must take the seatbelt off to grab the grab my 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 drawings." Oh, okay. Yeah, so that was that was premeditated too. Like, the 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 school of children or the group, they're like, yeah, we left him behind because he's going to be the ambassador to meet Gaia. <laughs> what is that? What? That they, they they left him behind on purpose so he can beat Gaia, <laughs> and everybody just seemed to be cool with it. <sighs> okay. Yeah, and then, and then Guy just fly. Guy lets them all climb into his hand. And he flies around, and it's like that's probably not a good use of. Uh... Like, you know, whatever. Uh, look, seems pretty dangerous, honestly. Look, every Ultraman except for Jack has been a friend to children. Fair. For some reason, maybe it's to make up for Jack. <laughs> a monster attempts to crucify and kidnap. Kidnap Gaia, so Agle finds his reason to rejoin the Ultraman front lines. But he's not an Ultraman. Yeah, he just shouts really loudly, and the Earth is like, "Yeah, sure, fuck it, shut up, just take some power and leave." <laughs> <laughs> okay. Gaia fights his German doppelganger, who sided with the destruction entity. Gaia also goes on a date with the Canadian Alchemy Stars lady, and every time every time they hold hands, it pans back to the comms girl. And she's, like, snapping a pencil, and she's just like, I don't know why, but I feel intense rage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but what is the destruction entity? So that's the uh, the actual big bad. Okay, because that, I... that name just kind of got dropped out of nowhere, so... See, that's the, the, the thing that the... The supercomputer was... Pretty... Well, yeah, that that's what the group was designed... That's what Guard was designed to, uh, to counteract. Yeah. 
And they've just been calling it the destruction. They've been really nebulous about it. I thought the big bad way back, like, when Aggle gave up his power, I thought that was the big bad. Oh. It just, that, that was just a really big monster. Okay. Like, so big that a uh, guy could fly into its mouth. Great. Yeah. Wait. As... As, big, as, as big, big form. Okay. All right. Like, it, it was a huge fucking monster that only got its head out of the, the wormhole before getting destroyed. This makes me think of fucking uh, um, King Ghidorah from... It more or less kind of was that. I mean, it wasn't like long spaghetti or anything <laughs> like that. And it wasn't that a King Ghidorah was so fucking disappointing. And the fact that it came down to, like, a ba- a mental battle. Yeah, until he, until the dude lost his eye. That was dumb. It was really fucking dumb. <laughs> anyway, an extinct tiger is cloned and promptly kidnapped by the destruction entity to be turned into a monster. Who? Wait, who got kidnapped? An extinct tiger clone. You see, the humans were like, look, we can, we can hopefully make up for some of the shit we've done. So we're going to bring back this tiger. Cool. I guess. Yeah. And the tiger is like, no, I'm still fighting for my life in here. <laughs> what do you mean by that? You, you see, uh, they, they talk to the tiger. And How? It... <laughs> Good question. <laughs> it, it, it's just, Aggle's like, look, I thought I, if I let him beat me up, he would stop being mad. He was not, he didn't stop being mad. He was still incredibly pissed off that we killed him. Because he, he was just minding his own business as a tiger. Uh-huh. And then the hunters came in. They just started shooting at him. And he, all he wanted to do was survive. Okay, yeah, fair. But, like, it's a clone. It doesn't have its memories. No, it's, it, it does. That, how? What? I, mm. <laughs> they, they found it on, like, an SD card back in the 70s. And they just plopped it right back in there. And, like, good. It's not how cloning works, but whatever. Earth gets ready to go on the offensive against the destruction entity, but Gaia is against the plan because they're only targeting a planet that the entity owns and not its homeworld. See, they got this big ass can, and they're like, we're gonna shoot it through the wormhole, we're gonna destroy that fucking planet. And Gaia's like, but that that's not where it's based out of. It's just using things from there. It was very reckless. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Like, we just built a planet-destroying cannon. Yeah, we're just... I mean, this is from the people who made a war crime bomb, so I guess, like, (laughs) it's not that out of the realm of possibility, but it really just feels like we've gone a little bit too far. And Gaia's problem isn't, like, we shouldn't blow up planets. Gaia's problem is, like, you're aiming at the wrong planet. Yeah. More or less. Okay. So the entity sends out its most intelligent monster yet, and Gaia, Zig, the uh, Feng Shui monster that got blown up by the War Crime Bomb, and Mr. War Crime Bomb himself have to team up. <laughs> <laughs> I... Th- I... Did it come back? Like you know, they don't actually know themselves. Mister War Crime is like, whoa, how is that thing back? I I know I did a war crime on it. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. A third machine is a third machine designed to fix the the, the planet that arrives to begin reforestation. Turns out these machines were created by future humans to expedite the ex- the extinction of regular humans. How are, how are they future humans if humans go extinct? Is this the worm problem again? <laughs> was that even from this series? I yes. don't actually remember. Yeah, that was from this one. <laughs> Look, remember that? Remember, remember when he went to Canada? Yeah. <laughs> that reforestation? That, that They stole this from the future or the past or what? I don't know. The, the future humans are like, man, we really suck. Let's team up with the destruction entity. That guy's selling. That guy's selling us a pretty good deal. But, but, <laughs> what, what 
so like what did like they defeat the destruction entity and then later they're like oh we feel guilty let's help the destruction entity in the past I don't fucking know they just show them like we're from the we're from the future you're idiots we're killing ourselves <laughs> I don't understand don't worry this will never come up again ugh <laughs> All right, the destruction entity sends a single pole magnet monster to recreate Pangea. His messenger attempts to recruit Agil with promises of his own single pole ma magnet monster. Zig uses the arrow base to explode it. Like, they shoot it? No, they 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 ram it with the the base. Okay. And that that blows up the base and the monster. Because they use some sort of, like, some bullshit to, uh, to make the base the other magnetic pole. So, it would, I don't fucking know. It was really dumb, it kind of went over my head, all I thought was just, hey, we're gonna sacrifice the airbase. I think it's dumber that it only, that just by making a magnetic monopole, it's just gonna pull the continents together, because that's not how any of that, the continents don't! It would just use it, it would increase in mass, like the fucking mass asteroid or the fucking, like, 90 episodes, like, 90 episodes ago. Okay, but still, the, the, the continents don't, like, float on the ocean. That's, well, they that's... don't know that. It'll pull the plates. It'll pull everything. That's... <laughs> that, doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. Whatever, it's Ultraman. It's fine. Angered by the destru destruction of his cool magnet, the messenger requests Ultraman as a sacrifice, but he doesn't specify which one. <laughs> Great. So they both show up and they just kick his ass. <laughs> okay. The Ultraman has had to become pest exterminators when the destruction entity sends in hordes of locusts. Great. The fight seems unwinnable until a random angel appears and to recharge them. Zombie? No, no. Damn it. The, the big, big blue angel lady. She's just like, here's a beam. This is an Ultraman in any way? No. But... Also, she kills a whole bunch of the locusts, too. Because, like, they, they can they can fucking merge in, into one big thing, and it's really dumb. Uh-huh. Yeah, so anyway, despite recharging the Ultramans and killing some locusts, the angel is a fickle being and, de and defeats the Ultramans while they're being broadcasted. Revealing their identity to everyone. Great. All of the non-exploded Earth monsters uh, appear to fight the locusts. <laughs> they all have solar powers or shit like that. They all have what? Solar power. What does that mean? They're powered by the sun. <laughs> Remember the fucking monster with the generator on its back? Yes. Yeah, he's back. The one who didn't die. <laughs> I, I, I... All the monsters that got spared are, 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 are back. Even the war crime, the one that got war crimed. Yeah, well, it came back in a previous episode, so like... Yeah, uh, I know, but he's, he's back. Great. They had the suits lying around, like, hey, what if, you know, just... Anyway, so the plan to fix the Ultramans is to have all the monsters across the Earth make trick shots with their sun powers. Like, they put up some fucking, like, uh, some mirrors. Uh-huh. And they're like, yeah, we're gonna angle these fucking mirrors at the Ultraman. And you're gonna shoot your powers. You're gonna shoot the sun, the, the power of the sun at them, and they're gonna, you know, be fine. Anyway, this miraculously works, and it, forcing the angel to reappear, and then it gets destroyed by a combination beam. <laughs> what was the fucking point of the angel except to be a Deus Ex Machina? Because it was the big bad. <laughs> that was the destruction entity. Then why did it give the Ultraman energy to fight the locust that it sent? <laughs> it's a fickle being. <laughs> no, I, I think what it was is they they, they say that it left uh it, it it left television alone. It got rid of all like radio waves and shit. Uh huh. I think it, I think the plan was to show the Ultramans getting defeated, which would then make all the humans be like, "Oh dang, we lost." We have been demoralized. <laughs> it was really fucking stupid. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's that's pretty <clears> dumb. <throat> okay, on to the specials. Oh, God. So here's Ultraman Tiga, Ultraman Dyna, and Ultraman Guy out battle in hyperspace. So Gaia gets Isekai to the quote-unquote real world by some children and their borb. <clears throat> the borb is stolen by bullies, and the Isekai wears off sending Gaia back. The bullies summon the King of Mons, while Gaia uses his convenient new vehicle to return. Tiga and Dyna get Isekai to help fight the King of Mons. The kids wish for the orb to not exist. See, this orb, uh, it's the ultimate weapon. It, it grants any wish. Mm-hmm. And it just travels through dimensions. And this is like the 4,000th dimension that it's been to. And it's like, man, this this, this sucks. There's a part where they're like, I wish the King of Mons was gone. And the orb is like, no, nope, no can do, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get rid of things that exist. <laughs> That's fine. Don't worry about it. No, the best part is when Tiga and Dinah show up. They, they they just look over and like, who the fuck are you? Yeah. No, that's fair. They just look at guy and they're like, I, I, I don't know this fucking guy. He with you? You know him? No. Where the fuck are we? And then they mostly just stand there doing nothing. Great. Probably because they only have one guy who can wear the Ultraman suit correctly. Like, actually do shit. So, like, they just put some extras into the Ultraman suits and they're just, like, just stand around. It's the same problem with all the Ultraman coming out of the hole and just, like, standing <laughs> around. It's like, yeah, because they filled, they filled the suit with extras. They only got one guy who can actually do shit. Yeah, I know. The, the, one of the best parts is, uh, since Gaia is from a TV show in this universe... Well, when he gets isekai uh-huh. everybody knows who he is, so he runs off after being chased by, like, a horde of children. Oh, good. And he steps into an Ultraman store, <laughs> <laughs> where they're playing his theme song. Oh, good. And it, it, it's just really dumb. Also, Hanajiro's there for some reason. Who? The Furby. From, oh. From From Dinah. That's weird. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's supposed to be like a toy or something in this, in this timeline. It, it, it doesn't matter. He's just there. Anyway, <laughs> the, the other special, Gaia once again. So the, the Ultramans have to go save some sea boogers from underwater dragonflies. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, Team Marlin gets to make their second appearance, where they spend it, again, unconscious underwater. Great. Good. <laughs> Team Marlin fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> we exist to be the damsel in distress. It's what we do. I mean, really, it is. I mean, they they, mm, they don't do anything. But like, they they act all like high and mighty because like because uh, Gaia had Gaia gives up his power at the end of the series proper. Uh huh. Or they take it away from him. I don't know. He doesn't have it anymore. He goes back to being a college kid. Cool. And they're like, yeah, we're gonna have you tag along with this special mission with Team Marlin. Uh, they're in, they're they're in charge. Uh, you're just there for like advice, I guess. I don't fucking know. Mm. And 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 they basically just berate him the whole time. Great. They're like, yeah, you don't know anything. You're 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 a you're a fly boy. You're not a you're not a Team Marlin. <laughs> You don't know anything about water. <laughs> and yeah, no. Uh, apparently, these sea boogers have the ability to give back the, uh, the 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 light, allowing them to change into Ultramans. It's weird. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, know, I don't fucking understand this at all. But uh, yeah, they were, uh, yeah. Yeah, I feel like I can just sum up the series as, like, Bagel does a thing, Gaia doesn't like it. <laughs> yeah. And, and like, it, that's, that's like, 60% of the show. Yeah, and then the other 40% is Gaia does a thing, Bagel doesn't like it. Kind of. It seems more like 
guard does the thing. That too. Kind of, but like, I he, don't know. It's It really... I don't know. It, it feels like it just stops making a whole... It, it just becomes like the 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 destruction entity sends a thing guy it doesn't like that <laughs> yeah pr- pretty much Ugh. i don't, i don't bring it up i didn't bring it up a whole lot but no there's a whole bunch of like aggro like, guys please i hate you stop stop existing what i i like i said i didn't bring it up at all but like there's a whole bunch of just like, yeah, no, humans are really bad. Oh, right, yeah. Let me go summon that monster with a fucking solar generator in its back. I'm just here to protect Earth. I, I don't give two shits about... He, he gets that from the supercomputer. Like, the supercomputer leads him on. Fun. Yeah, and that... that the whole thing is, like, the supercomputer tells him, yeah, no, just get rid of humans and Earth will be fine. And he just goes... All right. Checks out to me. That makes perfect sense. I mean, the math is right there. But yeah, no. Well, 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 this was a, uh, this was Gaia, and his best friend Aggle. <laughs> well, we'll see you later. <laughs>